the devil to pay. No sweat, no sweat. No sweat, no sweat. Perfect. It works. The Sunday well spent. On the contrary, people are more appreciative when I finally arrive. You haven't got patients waiting for you. No, but I got greedy sponsors, stuffed shirt account executives, and a bunch of crazies in the art department. Much worse. Philip, I have something very important to tell you. You what? You just stepped in it. <laughs> oh, thanks, Doc. After some earlier delays, traffic is moving again on all roads into the city. It's a Monday morning, and... Well, political analysts are totally no. at a loss, trying to account for the stunning upset of Senator William Grunsky of Arizona. Despite an overwhelming lead in the polls, Grunsky, the chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, was retired by voters. Well, so much for Grunsky. Become known as the most devastating political defeat of the decade. Ah, politicians. <laughs> You know, if the agency gets to be too bad this week, could you get me a nice, quiet room at your hospital in psychiatric observation? I can get you in, but I can't promise I can get you out again. We are here four inches below your kitchen sink to speak with all the... Hey, keep that one. It's only a commercial thing. I really mean only. Hey, there sure are a lot of you guys down here. Yeah, Millions. Yeah. Millions. Millions. Yeah. yeah. That's because the lady of the house don't use no Baxter sudsing drain cleaner. Yeah, 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 yeah. But if she poured some Baxter sudsing drain cleaner down here, you fellows would be in big trouble, huh? That was disgusting. <laughs> yeah, I know. I wrote it. You did? <sighs> With the Goldstein. You ought to be ashamed of yourselves, grown men. <laughs> Brenda? So when are we going to get married? Come on, Philip. Well, if not marriage, how about dinner Tuesday night? You know I work 12-hour shifts. Well, that leaves half of each day completely free and unattended. Unless you're seeing someone else. I gotta go on late. Tuesday night? All right. Only because you have such a way with words.
for me. Oh. Oops. Well, good morning, Tony. That bitch, Quinn, had me slaving all weekend. He's owned the shop one month, and he's already got everything in a royal flying uproar. Your fly's open. I'll give him a chance. It may work out. Hey, Mac. Press 28 for me. TV commercial casting's on 27. Why don't you smoke pot? At least it smells better. <coughs> what is on 28? The elevator doesn't even stop there. Well, who knows? It's Quinn's baby. Ever since he bought out Porter and Stripe. <laughs> no, no. I am absolutely not going to draft a memo and send it into Mr. Quinn for you. Well, do you have secretarial skills or are you just out here because you can't do anything? Yes. Mr. Quinn, the gentleman from the Toko Shomaya Agency are here to see you. This morning? You know the Japanese, they like surprises. Uh. And Mr. Morgan, your ex-wife called from Honolulu. She hasn't received her alimony check. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. I never sent it. Maybe they'll put us on the cover. Oh, and Mr. Morgan. Mr. Goldstein is looking for you. Yeah, you'll find me. <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> Is go it's a very formulized presentation. She'll do, but maybe we can get a happier looking cat. One that smiles. Sorry I'm late, Mr. Morgan. I missed my train. Am I glad to see you? Well, Goldstein, I don't know, are you? Yeah, Phil, I gotta talk to you. I don't know how much longer I'm gonna be able to put up with this job. Oh, not again. Not at 10.15 on a Monday morning. I know. Well, look at this. Mealybugs, Phil. Mealybugs. Better be careful. You know what Quinn did to me? Sweat ad. On Friday evening, he completely re-edited it. He took my jingle, my jingle, which was perfect to begin with, changed it all. Brought up the music in the background. Made me look like a complete ass. Probably didn't take much of an effort. Oh, well, thank you very much. Very kind of you. What are mealy bugs supposed to look like? Ugly. Maybe we should discuss what Mr. Quinn is doing to you. Huh? These aren't mealy bugs. No, they're not. I lied to you. I'm just trying to get your attention. Goldstein, I'm trying to finish a short story. Will you listen to me? Have you seen those bright, happy new faces down the hall? The little flock that Quinn is shepherding around this morning? Yes, so what? Oh, you did? Well, why don't you go out and say hello, Phil? Happens to be one half of your new creative department. Lucky you. Well, Reed and Cassidy, they were part of your department. Unless I'm very much mistaken, they were fired. Friday. Bill Walden quit over the shaving cream account. Said Quinn, you listen to me. Mom goes to it's penny sheet. I don't care. Walden said Quinn was harassing him, so he quit. Because he wouldn't let him use his foamy, foamy jingle. <laughs> that is three cold bodies added to the two cold bodies of the previous week, and you're looking at another potential cold body. Need your pocket calculator? Look, it's Quinn's agency. He can do what he wants with it, okay? some trouble I would just casually mention that last Friday evening they started a new hush hush ad campaign without you gonna do something rash I hope 
The meeting is private. What's this I hear about a campaign that began on Friday evening? I only know what Ted Quinn tells me. Yeah, well, I know even less. Morgan! Perfect. Come on in. We were just about to send for you. Mr. Quinn, I want to talk to you. Come in. Welcome. These are some of the people you'll be working with on the new accounts. I've told them that we have the finest creative director in the city. A legend among copywriters. I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Be the God and Father of our Lord according to the Who'd have thought Ed Porter? Selling out to Ted Quinn must have killed him. Just a minute, just a minute. What? Just a second. Okay, I'm ready now. <laughs> Come on. The Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. Lucky Ed Porter. He got out of advertising. Heart attack. Some guys have all the luck. Look, there's Alex Stripe. Let's go over and say hello. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Forever and ever. Amen. Amen. My, how are things going? It'd uh, be a lot better if that was Quinn in that box. Shh, sorry, I'm sorry. What's the matter? Sam's not having fun at the agency. Nah, yeah, it's too much like work now. Lots of hassles. <laughs> oh, well, times change. Yeah. Friends and family of Edwin... <coughs> Edward Porter. There's a different breed of man coming into advertising now. <clears throat> Not much we can do about it. Listen, you mind my asking? Why'd you sell out to King Kong over there? Ted Quinn came to me one day and offered to buy the agency. Well, what was his background in advertising? <laughs> he didn't have one. What? Listen to this. He worked in Washington. He was some sort of media consultant for the government. I didn't really investigate it. Ed Porter, God bless him, and I weren't interested in selling. But Quinn asked us to name a price. So we did. He paid it. To the haven of our good Lord, Jesus Christ. I notice you've been keeping very quiet about what happened with Quinn yesterday, Phil. No, nothing happened. Quinn just wants me to work with some new people, I thought. Oh, really? Bought you off, huh? No, I was doing my job. You ever consider quitting, Phil? <laughs> Alimony, child support, car payments and rent, you must be kidding. All the things I've been missing out on. You know, a long time ago I thought I was going to be writing novels and short stories for a living, but I sold out. I write ad copy instead. Two now. Just two now. Let me see. It's a rotten brand. This is the stuff. Cheaper. So now that you're one of Quinn's boys, you don't really give a damn about all those guys that were fired, am I right? I don't see you spitting on your paycheck. God, it's incredible the price of cream these days. All the cows must be rich. Mm-hmm. Who well, doesn't know it yet, but he and I are headed for a talk tomorrow morning. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I don't like him starting ad campaigns without me. Well, we're a jock staff. Princess. Oh, here you are. Hello, sweetheart. Hello. How are you? Daddy's home with dinner. Hello. Isn't this nice? Usually, if I don't feed her right away, she holds back her affection all evening. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah. Come here, darling. I've got some nice things for you. Come on. Come on, sweetheart. Daddy loves you. She's probably got mealy bugs. 
Let's go into the kitchen. I bought some tuna. Why don't you trade her in for a woman? Get a real perspective on things. Pass. Cream's too expensive these days. I don't believe you. Princess always takes cream with her meal, don't you, boo boo? Uh. You know, you're one of the top copywriters in the city, and you're pulling down $42,000 a year, and you live in this roach farm. Would you leave them alone? They're Princess's favorite snack. Hmm. Too late. Jerk. This place is more suited to rats. Yeah, well, we've got a few. How would you like one scotch for the road? Just one. Great. Okay. One glass here. Oh, there's one. Phil, have you seen this? This is a beautiful old Studio 96. This is one of the best ever made. All I need is a reconditioned motor, you know? Looks like a piece of junk to me. Thanks a lot, pal. I always wondered why the scotch tastes better here. <laughs> well, you know what my motto is. Always go with quality. Here's to you and yours. Cheers. Cheers. How's Brenda? She hasn't been getting you pregnant, has she? No. You know, I have some very creepy news about Mr. Quinn. If you talk about the office, I won't drink your scotch. No, no. I'm just talking about another top secret ad campaign. That's all I'm talking about. Well, I don't want to hear it, okay? Okay. What is it? Do the words chocolate planet ring a bell? Chocolate what? <laughs> Chocolate Planet. Oh, come on, Morgan. How did you find out about it? I'd rather not say. Let me warn you. Goldstein is a zany eccentric who is tolerated around here because he invents better than average copy. But don't let him lead you astray. He doesn't function in the real world. What, is this the real world, Mr. Quinn? We're introducing a new chocolate milk powder on network television. So far, it's been a secret project. Chocolate milk secret? The manufacturer doesn't want the competition to be forewarned. You know how clients are. Well, if you have any other projects that aren't secret, I'd love to work on them. Cynicism doesn't become you, Morgan. Cigar? No, thank you. Mr. Quinn, I am the creative head of this department, and I resent things being done behind my back. There wasn't time, Morgan. The client insisted on secrecy, and I had to go with the editors and copywriters I know best. What, you mean the ones you just hired? I'm afraid so. I sent them up to my place in the country and quarantined them at a marathon think tank. Look, why am I the last to know? I can understand you're feeling upset. Feelings are very sensitive in this business. Mr. Quinn, the atmosphere in this agency is changing. Now, you've replaced half my staff. All I want to know is what the hell is really going on. Morgan. Follow me. I don't regard myself as a man who sells products, Morgan. I sell ideas, concepts. Really? What sort of concepts? You may be called upon for great things, Morgan. Feel free to speak with me. Express your thoughts. Uh, Mr. Quinn, just between you and me, let, let's cut the crap. You uh, value your position here, don't you? Of course. I mean, that's why I'd appreciate knowing what your plans are for this agency. Well, there you are. Chocolate Planet. Right on the mark, wouldn't you say? I have plans for you. I would like Philip Morgan to start thinking like upper management. Hi there, Glamorous. 
Well, you should be in advertising. Maybe you should be on a diet. <laughs> Philip, Philip, take a look at this. <laughs> a can executives from Baldwin, Fitzpatrick, and Sutton. It's very convenient if they get dressed in the dark. <laughs> mm, here comes your lady. Ah. Hi, love. Hi, darling. Hiya, Doc. Hiya, Sam. Mm, how are you? Fine. What you up to? Nothing much. We're just trying to figure out a way to trap Quinn in a burning building, that's all. Oh, come on. Let's get some food. Uh, yeah. Uh, excuse me. You won't mind. The food's rotten here anyway. You won't want to eat it. <laughs> oh, I know what I want. Quinn's blood on the rocks. Oh, come on, Goldstein. Cut it out. I've had enough of Quinn. Have you? Well, listen to me. I've been trailing him, you know. You've been following him? You've what? Yeah, I try to. He always gives me the slip. You know what, Goldstein? You're just too paranoid. Well, if even paranoids have enemies. Now, you tell me. Where in Washington would Quinn get all this advertising experience on? I don't know. Where would he get such preparation for media interpretation? That's exactly the question I've been working on. Would you like to order now? And take a look at this. You want to order something? I'll have white wine, please. What is that? This is a motor for my tape recorder. A little elbow grease will get the machine working again. I'm recording my autobiography. Bill, whatever happened to that other friend of Goldstein's? Who, Bill Walden? Yeah, you know, the guy with the crew cut, buck teeth, and <laughs> bulletproof glasses? That's the one. Uh, he quit Friday. Why? Well, he got into a fight with Quinn over subliminal messages in a shaving cream commercial. I thought subliminal messages were legal. Oh, uh, not so. In fact, I'll show you one of ours. Here we go. Take a look. So? Oh, what's this? Scotch on the rocks. <laughs> Aha. Take a closer look at these ice cubes. See that skull? Mm hmm. And on this one, looks like a death mask, doesn't it? Sort of. No, it is. Tony Flynn retouched the ad. He airbrushed the photo and then drew in the faces. What for? Maybe it's a death wish. The media boys think it appeals to heavy drinkers, you know, self-destruction and all that. Anyway, it helps move the merchandise. I don't believe it. Is that what you people do all day? <laughs> no, some of us put phallic images in perfume commercials and others hide lewd photographs in cigarette ads. I just can't believe that a few brush strokes that nobody can see on an ice cube is going to sell booze. Ah, but that's the point. No one consciously sees it, but it registers. It works. You know what, Philip? Goldstein isn't the only one that's crazy. Well, we all may be a little crazy, but it keeps us from going insane. Uh, Sam's been copywriting for five years, so by now it's perfectly normal, rational, and understandable that he is a card-carrying, paranoid schizophrenic. I, however, have been in the business for 16 years. 11 as a copywriter, and the last five as a creative director. And despite having won an award or two in my time, and I refer here to the breadth of Met Mouthwash campaign of 1977, I am clearly more worthy of your sympathy and affection than one Sam Goldstein, right? Maybe. Uh, don't be easy. <laughs> No, for razor blades. The man who chewed razor blades. Gosh, maybe I can get a short story out of it, who knows. Do you want me to take your mind off of advertising? What, again? Ballet. Ballet? You know, one of the technicians at the hospital can't use two tickets for tomorrow night. Some about men running around in tights, it makes me nervous. I mean, it reminds me of our art department. All right, all right, I'll go. Promise? I promise. 
I'm taking my portfolio to Mitchell, Farron, and Yerby. I can't stand any more of this. Bill, I've been looking for you. I've got to talk to you. For Not a now, Goldstein. What's the matter? What's going on? When? You just screwed me for the evening. You're sending me on some overnight presentation. Chocolate Planet, right? No, oil and spec. No, sorry, operator. Dr. Wilcox, please. We had this nice evening all planned, and he decides it. Hello? Brenda? Yes, you guessed it. Look, I know we had the tickets already. No, I'm sorry. Look, I know. No, I didn't plan it this way. Can you find someone else? Dr. Who? No, I don't mind at all. That's, that's, that's great. I'll call you later. Bye. Here, hold this. Next time, I keep my mouth shut. I wanted to see what Quinn's angle is, so I'm sending Brenda to the ballet with some neurologist. A female? Male. Phil, Phil, what's the big rush, huh? Quinn's got a car waiting in 30 seconds. It leaves without me. Yeah, well, well don't go. But, Phil, I'm really scared. What? I'm on to him. I think I figured it out. But I want you to come to my apartment. I want you to hear something, all right? But Quinn is waiting for me. But it all makes sense. Quinn has... Morgan, we're waiting for you. Phil, please. Look, I'll call you later, okay? from Goldstein, have you? Why would I? Well, he said he wanted me to hear something important. I've been trying to phone him all evening. I haven't heard from him. Mm. Well, at midnight we sent out for some food. That was the highlight of the evening around here. Philip, do you know what time it is? It's 2.15 in the morning. Yeah, well, uh, how about a nightcap? Quinn's let us off till 7 a.m. I am not thirsty, I am not hungry, but I am sleepy. Good night, Philip. You sound angry. What, do you think I don't like ballet? I'm not angry. Did I wake you? No. Oh, I get it. You get company. <sighs> Philip, call me tomorrow, all right? Good night. Good night. still left here. I was just finishing. What are you doing? Personnel sheets. If we get the banner oil account, we'll have to totally rearrange the creative and art departments. You must be used to that by now. Anyway, when you're finished, if you'd like to go for a sandwich. That's awfully nice of you, Mr. Morgan, but I've got to get some sleep. Uh, maybe some other time. Of course. Uh, just one other thing. Good call me, Philip. Good night, Philip.
Everything okay there? Yes, fine. Fine. Are you some coffee, huh? Thank you kindly. There's a place that I know where it's fine and groovy with good food and it's so better than a movie. Come on down and dig it, baby. Can we get the big oil account? When can take his up his ass. Goldstein was dismissed yesterday at 5.30 and he cleaned out his office in the evening. I don't think he took it too well. I'm sorry, Philip. Hey. Hey, wait just a bloody minute. Sam worked here for eight years. You don't kick a man out like that. It was a corporate decision. And don't act so irrational. When, huh? He kept me busy and then fired my best friend. Sam could have been a top copywriter. He is a top copywriter. Far better than those six deadbeats that Quinn just hired. Goldstein's attitude was wrong and you know it. I suspect his attitude was exactly right. Maybe you should talk to him. Try to help him. What's going on? Quinn's ready to see us. See him yourself. Sam. Come on, Sam. If you're in there sulking, I want to talk to you. Dean, if you're in here, the joke's over. Sam. Come on, Goldstein, where are you? Princess, it's only me. Philip Morgan, you know, creative head, Quinn, Porter, and Stripe. Just like any other female, playing hard to get. Princess, why can't you talk? If Sam's not here, where is he? Hmm? Maybe you're hungry, no? It's not like Goldstein, you know, skipping on your food. Come on, Princess, get your tuna. I said the magic word, huh? There you go. Well, now, what's the problem? Ah. Princess always takes cream with a meal. Yeah. You know, the problem is you're spoiled. No cat has a right to be spoiled.
I cannot tolerate the depressing absurdity of having to look for another job in advertising. Failure is failure. If I'd wanted to lead a socially useless life, I would have become a school teacher or a cop. What is advertising anyway? Grown men playing deceitful, childish games. I no longer wish to take part. I'm sealing myself into the refrigerator so I can't turn chicken and change my mind. I've always wondered whether the light really goes off when the door closes. Always go with quality, Sam Goldstein. Does this sound in character to you? He's been disturbed. I suppose so. Sergeant? Mm. Some sign of tampering with the door. I can't be sure, but it looks... Well, that was me. I, I used a credit card to break in. Have forensics check it. Waste removal has just arrived. Oh, they can move it. Waste removal? Detective Ross has a macabre sense of humor. Why don't we uh, go into the other room, huh? Questions? Of course. The um, deceased had said he wanted to tell you something. Yeah, I uh, had an important meeting to go to, and Sam uh, Goldstein, he, he tried to stop me, and I said he wanted me to hear something. Here's something. Uh, well, here's something. Tell me something. What's the difference? It, I take it to mean the same thing. Anyway, I never heard it. Uh, or he never told me. I see. Two fires. Mr. Morgan, you'd be willing to come down and sign the statement? Yes, sir. Sergeant, if we have one more pair of hands to pull the zipper, I think we can get him in the body bag. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, Mr. Morgan. Yes, sir. Can you think of any reason why anyone would want to kill Goldfarb? No. It's Goldstein. Oh, well, so it is. Sorry. Hey, excuse me. Just be there, all right? Yes. Oh, Jesus, if I'd only listened to him. Uh, you've got to sign in. Now what? Take your coat off. I want you to listen to something. Goldstein's tape. Okay, test. Test. All right, this is day one. This is Monday, the... Oh, come on, Goldstein, what is it today? Monday the 13th. I'm recording this because famous last words. I actually do think I know what's going on. And if I do happen to sound like a paranoid maniac, I want to be the first to hear it. 
Am I right, Princess? Good, she's a cockroach. Want to stay listening to me? Okay. I was really ticked off about the way my no sweat ad got mangled by Quinn. It was a very delightful ad. I decided I'd go have a friendly little chat with him. I was perfectly professional. I just wanted to know why my taglines were ripped off. Why did he bring up the music so insensitively at the conclusion? Why did he wreck the whole thing? His reaction was completely predictable. He said, he said the no sweat folks, folks, were so pleased that they were going to renew and expand their account with us. Lots of money involved, blah, 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 what a bore the man is. I then said, why don't you go screw yourself? He said, why don't you go resign? It was a very frank and productive meeting. And then, I told him he was a rotten American. I really got him. And then I tried a little bluff. I said, I know the real reason that you changed my ad. And then Sam Goldstein, you snake in the grass, you calmly left his office, which is when you started to think. Welcome, sir. Finally. Thought one. Ad agencies sell ideas. They can manipulate every aspect of communications and media. Very perceptive. Thought two, ad agencies are propagandists of the free enterprise system, and so they operate freely. They're taken for granted. Not bad. Thought three, so what? So, they're beyond suspicion. The hell with everybody else. I think I have a not bad mind. Mr. Quinn. Mr. Quinn. Rearrangement of personnel, the rotten things he did to me, and I know that you hide things in your office safe, Mr. Quinn. This all ought to make sense. It should fit together, but it doesn't yet. Okay, there's something I have to check. Till tomorrow, this is Goldstein to Goldstein, signing off. Okay, day two. I'm getting closer. Quinn is not interested in the advertising business. And he definitely couldn't care less about selling deodorant. Now, George Miller is our media buyer, right? And he likes to talk. So he told me Quinn came to him personally about testing TV markets for the No Sweat campaign. Here's the catch. Usually these markets are just scattered all around the country. But Miller only bought spots in Arizona. Very fishy. Why just one state? Why Arizona? I shall circle back to the beginning. Once upon a time, the ad agency had lots of money problems. Enter Quinn, direct from Washington. Unlimited bankroll and exit Porter and Stripe. Now, what the hell would Quinn want with an advertising agency? What? Yeah, okay, just a. Will you wait a minute? Because if Quinn has an advertising. All right, I'm coming! Something happening at my door, but I will be back. That's where it ends. He didn't commit suicide at all. He was in the middle of making this tape when... Now I heard somebody. Is anyone there? It's Gwen. Where? Look in the mirror. Gotta get to the stairs. What for? We'll walk down. That's 27 floors. What are you tired? No, but I have new boots on. My feet are killing me. Sit down, we'll take them off. Oh, God. Morgan? Yes, sir. I nearly blew your head off. 
What are you doing here? I have a jealous husband. Uh, yes, there are only so many places, Mr. Quinn. And my wife, uh, she hired a detective. She moved. Oh, for God's sake, you creative people. Good thing you didn't come in five minutes ago. Morgan, why don't you do us all a favor? Yes, sir. I hate to break up a romance, but why don't you try and find a discreet hotel? That's what I used to do when I was your age. Uh, Mr. Quinn, what's a man like you carrying a gun for? Burglars. What else? Burglars. Who did he think he was kidding? Who do we think we were kidding? Quinn had to have been upstairs all along, up on his damn 28th floor. I just wish I knew what to do with this tape. It's not conclusive. It suggests everything and proves nothing. Charlie! Come let us out! You better put that somewhere safe. Any suggestions? How about the drug cabinet in my office? There you go. Thanks, you're a doll. Hey, George, can I bum a cup of coffee? Sure. Another cup of coffee, huh? Well, that's the only mug we've got. Well, I'm sure Philip won't mind a styrofoam cup. Okay. Not at all, not at all, as long as it's hot. Hey, uh, how'd the little brunette work out that Tony Flynn fixed you up with the other night, huh? Mm -hmm. oh, no sweat. Uh, they'll be the devil, too. Hey. <laughs> it reminds me, how were those no-sweat commercials scheduled? Well, as I told our late friend, it was the weirdest media buy I ever made. Yeah. There you are, Mr. Morgan, sir. Oh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, what do you mean? Why should I tell you? Oh, come on, Philip. I was instructed to keep it secret. Well, gee, George, I'm sorry. I just asked a simple question. I mean, after all, I thought we were friends. I even had this cute little secretary I want you to meet. She's really hot to trot. Long blonde hair and great legs. Great legs? Fabulous legs. You'd love them. Yeah, well, Quinn told me to use the saturation television campaigns in one state and one state only. What, any state? Arizona, he insisted. Listen, you uh, got that phone number? Uh, yeah, I think I might have it on me. But, uh, why Arizona? How the hell do I know? Probably because it was the most unbelievable pain in the ass for me. Uh, I'm not following. Local elections. Yeah, well, uh, so? So the chickens have wings. There was very little time available for spot commercials. Most of it had been used by the Senate candidates. <laughs> yeah. Did, uh, did you get all the time you needed? You know, I could, uh, get fired for this. Uh, do you have that, uh, phone number? Just happen to have it handy. <laughs> I got all the time I needed and more. Quinn had me increase the saturation campaign. We bought our own block of time and we could place our spots wherever we wanted to. We were seen by more voters than the actual candidates were. <laughs> Hot to trot, eh? Oh, you bet you'll love her. Uh, thanks for the coffee, George. Yes? If Philip Morgan is there, I'd suggest you go to Mr. Quinn's office right away. Thank you. Listen, um, I never said anything, eh? I didn't say a word. Uh, don't worry about a thing, George. Oh, Philip! What's her name? Anna. Anna? Anna? That's my second... Yes, sir? Uh, I'll be fine. Sergeant, I must say that I have the greatest respect for Mr. Morgan. He'll tell you the truth. That would be helpful. I never lose sight of the city and its people. Mr. Morgan is here. Oh, hello, Morgan. Come in. I believe you and Sergeant Eckersley know each other? Yes, we've met. Sit down. Thank you, sir. The detectives were just telling... He don't mind. Mr. Morgan, I'm sure I don't need to remind you of the events of Tuesday the 14th. No, you don't need to. So? There's a large tape recorder in the foreground of Photograph A. There's a reel on it. 
Yet in photograph B, taken 20 minutes later, the reel's missing. Mr. Morgan, you're the only person who could have taken that tape. Nice pictures. Is there something on the tape, Mr. Morgan? Morgan, I could call our legal department if you'd care to confer with one of our attorneys. I don't need a lawyer. Mr. Morgan, that tape is part of a police investigation. You did take it. Yes. Well, then, certainly you'd be willing to give it back. Stubborn, Mr. Morgan. I'm a reasonable man, but I have an investigation to complete. Mr. Morgan, forgive my bluntness. You broke into Goldstein's apartment. You found the victim's body. You can't account for your time when the death occurred. And several witnesses recall seeing you and Goldstein having an argument on Tuesday when you left work. Furthermore, you have removed a critical piece of evidence which you refuse to turn over to us. When you want to confess, I'm available. May I ask what you did? They think I killed someone. Oh, yeah. You look like a real killer. Hey, that's not funny. Look, a friend of mine's dead, and I didn't have a thing to do with it. I, I mean, I... I hear how you didn't do it. When you read some. I got the call, I thought it was for your glove compartment filled with parking tickets. Now I discover you're being held in lieu of a $75,000 bond. Material witness in a homicide investigation. Can you get me out or not? Do you have access to money like that? Jill, are you kidding? I mean, my ex-wife gets 60% of my paycheck. What about collateral? Look, you handled my divorce, you know I got cleaned out. I mean, the police even took my wristwatch so I can't hang myself. Philip, you're in a lot of trouble. Oh. What's on the tape? Nothing much. It won't help. Does it implicate you? No. Someone else? No. Well, then, it might cheer up Detective Eckersley, for starters. All right. Look, I want you to go see a friend of mine. She has the tape. Tell her to have a copy made. Then we'll have one for ourselves, and then we'll give Detective Eckersley the other one. I'll do what I can, Philip. But what you really need is a good criminal lawyer. Well, where can I get a copy of this tape made? There is an audio store upstairs on the street level. Go up there and tell them Lou Furman sent you. Yeah, they'll help. I'm uh, Lou Furman. Just cooperate and you won't be hurt. This isn't necessary, you know. I do have office hours. Oh, lady, help me. I'm being kidnapped. department with the missing tape. Well, 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 won't that be a good start? As you know, Mr. Morgan was a close friend of the deceased, Mr. Uh, 
A Goldstein. A Goldstein. Hence, Mr. Morgan would like to make a few initial remarks. Well, I see, uh, Gwen Porter and Stripe. Uh, there's more to the agency than meets the eye. Now, I don't know who they are. I don't know what they're trying to do. But Quinn, he's up to something. session at 2 a.m. the night Goldstein died. Instead of going home, he went to his club, which was nearby. At 7 a.m., he went back to work. Witnesses every step of the way. But you see, he wanted witnesses that night. Uh, so far, Mr. Morgan, you haven't accounted for your time between 2 and 7 a.m. Sergeant, are you accusing my clients? I'm only stating the facts as we know them. <laughs> Mr. Morgan. <laughs> You said you had a girlfriend. Did you see her that night? No. I checked Mr. Quinn's background myself. His credentials are excellent. Oh, unusual. In fact, they couldn't be better. He's not only in advertising, is he? Goldstein and your woman friend, Mr. Morgan. They knew each other well? No, wait just a minute. Don't answer another question. My client agreed to provide Hold the it. police with it. Let's listen to the tape. Brenda? Brenda, are you in there? Brenda, open the door. Bella. Are you all right, Brenda? <laughs> I'm so scared. It's okay. I brought the police. Oh, you brought the police. How'd you know? No, no what? <laughs> they could the two men. What two men? They tried to kidnap me, but I got away because I was having a baby. You sit right here. And they were waiting for me when I got home. I tried to call you, but they cut the line and the phone's dead. Works. They said they wouldn't hurt me if I gave them the tape. So I had to, Villa. You gave them the tape? I knocked over the magazine basket and they took the tape. See? Yep. 
Oh, Bill, this is not my imagination. It really happened. They drugged me and I woke up on the couch and they even ripped my clothes. I'm sure, I'm sure they did. The tape was in this basket. Mm -hmm. okay, okay. What they took, did it look like this? Hey, tell me something. Why are you in here? They call it suspicion. The police department contends I forged a series of checks. You're innocent too, uh... Well, it's not my game at all. What did you get? B and E. What? Breaking an entry. Ah. And also crack safes. In fact, if I can make bail, I'll be back in business. I'm losing money while I'm locked up. All right, Morgan, it's your lucky day. It's what? You mean I'm out? Shit. Morgan. I played your girlfriend's tape. It's blank. I've also tracked down all the wild charges you made against your employer. They're also blank. Nevertheless, your dear old ad agency has put up money from its corporate account. You're being released in Mr. Quinn's custody. Behave yourself. Take care. Yeah, we'll do. the other door, George. Oh, of course. Miller, you wanted to see me, sir? Miller, this may be news to you, but I expect my instructions to be followed. Sir? The No Sweat television campaign, that was to remain confidential, wasn't it? Yes, sir. Have you discussed it with anyone? Oh, no, sir, I haven't. You have, haven't you? Well, sir, uh, Philip Morgan is head of creative, and I thought... Damn it, Miller. Confidential is confidential. Do you understand? Yes, sir. You knew my instructions? Yes, sir. And you behaved like an idiot? Yes, sir. Is this going to happen again? Yes, sir. I mean, no, sir. Certainly not, sir. Never, sir. All right, Miller, you can do it. Miller, button your coat. Miller, why don't you lose some weight? Yes, sir. myself. Two days in jail and I'm ready for a life in crime. Oh, I hope we're doing the right thing. <clears throat> How long is he out for? I gave him 200 milligrams of sodium nanotop. That ought to put him out for about an hour. Ah, that's more than enough. There? Yeah. Forty-seven left. How much time we got left? How much? Safe's tough on the bull's ass. Yeah. 
28 right. But there's nothing I can't get into. Okay. Hey! What? Mind your manners, amateur. What? Gloves! Oh, oh Jesus, Joseph and Mary. Exactly what I'm looking for. What are they? Field cassettes of commercials. What are they doing in a safe? I don't know. That's what we came to find out. Let's take a look at them. Shut up. Sleeping Beauty. Let's get this junk back. Christ. Ty. 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 Hurry. on this floor, so there's somebody up here somewhere. They gave me a needle in the ass right here. What am I supposed to do? Turn the other cheek. Okay. Not a word all day about the burglary. Quinn's probably playing it very cool. Do you think he knows about it? There's nothing that man doesn't know. I just happen to have a couple of tickets to a ballet tomorrow night. Oh, Philip, I have other plans. I see. Uh, now the doctor's appointment. Am I interrupting? Mind if I sit down? Dr. Wilcox, good evening. Well, what brings you here, Miss Quinn? You mind if we talk a little business, Morgan? I don't usually come to people, they come to me. But uh, tonight I need you. What's the occasion? Chocolate Planet is in trouble. <laughs> How much trouble can a chocolate drink be in? Well, the initial advertising campaign plans are set. But two weeks from now, when we begin the follow-up, uh, the feces will hit the fan. I need you to sort the project out. That's why I picked up your bail. $75,000 just for a consultation. What about tomorrow? Do you have plans? As a matter of fact, I... I've sent a team up to my estate. No disturbances. I'll uh, have a car pick you up in the morning. That's very thoughtful. Good. I knew I could count on you. 8 a.m. Good night, Doctor. Good night, Mr. Quinn. What a hit and run artist. You're not going out to some deserted house with that fiend, are you? Hey, don't worry. I'm too big to fit in the refrigerator. What if you've got a walk-in freezer? Well, where are the doctors going tonight? Dancing. Oh, dancing. Oh, terrific. This doctor must be a proctologist. He's given me a real pain in the ass. Ah, here's my ride. I'll call you later. Hi. Good morning. Who's she? Chauffeur, I guess. Philip? Enjoy your work.
Uh, did you get a promotion or is being my chauffeur in your job description? You're being very flippant for a man out in a $75,000 bail. I'm your custodian, Philip. Ah, uh, yes. Why does a woman like you work for a man like Quinn anyway? Philip, you don't know a thing about Ted Quinn. Oh, don't I? Ted is a very brilliant, very innovative, and very sincere man. I suppose in advertising, anything's possible. He's concerned, sensitive, and highly moral. Hmm. Well, if I could just see one of the qualities that you see, I'd be greatly relieved. Maybe you haven't looked hard enough. Or in the right place. Well, maybe I've looked too hard. Watch out. Like it? Yeah, wish I'd brought my skis. Now, I don't want to get into a heavy trip on this, but we got to consider what the sponsor is coming down with. We've got an emergency. A chocolate planet emergency, I guess you could say. The packaging bombed out in some of our test sales areas. In St. Louis, the stores were shelving it with the motor oil. In Philadelphia, the supermarkets had it with the laxatives. So, I huddled with the sponsor and the art department, and we came up with this. More zip, I think. More uh, space age. And notice uh, we tried not to make the rocket ship look too phallic. And this is such garbage. Look at On the that. first package, we had a letter from a Catholic youth organization in South Philadelphia. Got telephone. When is afraid of leaks, so we disconnected all the telephones. Penis image. Nonsense, of course. But... Good morning. Good morning, morning. Good morning. Good morning. Am I interrupting? Not at all. I just wanted to say a word or two. You people are all professionals. You've been through these sessions before. We're here to sell America a new product. Our goal is to move five million units of the Chocolate Planet line within the first annum. Now, that's no easy task, but I feel that we have a team in this room who can put the final parts of the campaign together. Does anyone disagree? Up to it, Morgan? Uh, of course, Mr. Quill. Good. I knew I could depend on you. Ladies and gentlemen, I am confident that you will not let me down. Bullshit. Chocolate Planet, my ass. Yes? Hello. Hi. I thought I heard you talking. Yeah, I was. <laughs> May I come in? Can we talk? Sure, why not? You're head of personnel. What do you want to talk about? Philip, you're very slow. And very attractive. Do you know that? Well, I've been told worse. Remember the night when we were working late and you offered to take me out for a sandwich? And you declined. I figured it was the beginning of a seduction. It was that night. You changed your mind? No, I just don't pursue lost causes. Who says it's a lost cause?
Anybody here? You need a lift? Don't worry, Mr. Morgan. You haven't been forgotten. You're taking me back, huh? Hey, why all the star treatment? Have I made up her management? <laughs> Keep quiet. your turn. What are we doing? One of us is going to commit suicide. Uh, I don't suppose it's either one of you. Thank you. Holy shit. Oh, Christ. Hello? Brenda? Brenda? Yes. I'm just driving back from the country. Can you hear me all right? Yeah, you just caught me. I was just leaving. Yes, I'm fine. Look, Brenda, this is serious. I got to get to the agency immediately. Call Sergeant Eckersley and tell him to meet me there as soon as possible, okay? Sergeant Eckersley? Got any gas? Nope. All we sell here is teddy bears. You fill the both of them up. That phone work? Yeah. Do you work? Tell me, where'd you two dudes pick up on a couple of choppers? <laughs> you get lucky in a Cracker Jack box? <laughs> Why don't you shut your little mouth? All right. I see. Well, where do you think he is now? Well, follow him in there. I want this settled tonight. 
morons. Come on, Charlie. Open up. I got to go up to the office. He's so slow. He must be getting paid by the hour. Gotta sign in. That's what you're doing, sabotaging elections. <laughs> you think on a very small scale, Morgan, it's a lot more than elections. Yeah, well, so what is it? You're not an advertising man, so what are you? It's all upstairs. You want to see it? Come on. Trust me, Philip. Let's have a private screening, huh? Sometimes, Mr. Quinn, you're too nice to me. So this is the 28th floor. When are you going to open it? Never. You remember No Sweat, Morgan? Use a different brand. Yeah, so do I. Sit down. Come on, make yourself comfortable. The No Sweat campaign carried two messages. The sponsors and mine. Liminal tape beneath the service tape. I can bring it up or fade it down as I see fit. 
The message registers, but the viewer's not conscious of it. On the commercials that ran, my subliminal message was embedded in the videotape at one three hundredth of the intensity of the surface message. I got through to my audience, Morgan. I retired the chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. That's one more knee-jerk liberal out of the way. How do you know he wouldn't have lost anyway? Consider the technique. Our candidate was trailing by 9 to 11 points in all the polls up until a week before the election. No sweat changed all that. Well, I suppose your next step is the White House. Precisely. It's a devastating weapon, Morgan. Let us into the living room, we can enter the mind. It's power. Whose power? Our power. Public opinion is crucial. Someone must use a guiding hand. And you've chosen yourself for that privilege. Not at all. I've been hired, financed. I am in philosophical agreement with the people I work for. So that does make it cozy. Who are they? The names don't matter, Morgan, though you might recognize some of them. Let's just call them uh, an elite of power, or maybe an influential elite who understand the value of manipulating public opinion. You know, Mr. Quinn, I'm going to expose you. I think not, Morgan. Nor have you any right to. The public wants to be led. It needs to be led. And we have long-term plans. What a great idea. A picnic on the lunar surface. I don't know how this happened, but I forgot the chocolate planet mix. Oh, no. There needn't be an emergency. Chocolate Planet is available everywhere. Subliminal messages for children, too? It's the next generation. They spend six hours a day watching television. We can plant seeds. What's beneath that commercial? It's not all negative, Morgan. Really, it isn't. The concentration of power is healthy. It's like a vacuum cleaner that sucks up all the chaos and disorder and gets rid of it. It's as simple as getting a few messages across. Gives you the right to clean up anything. In the end, people will always think for themselves. But deep faith in human nature, from a man who's built a career on suggesting the differences between laundry detergents, mouthwashes, and dog food. Philip, you leave me speechless. There's nothing on the Chocolate Planet commercial yet. It's like an unloaded gun. We begin programming it tomorrow. Without you, I'm afraid. This time, do it right. Morgan, I had such hopes for you. You going for another ride in the country? You're late for an appointment with your maker.
kill me the same way you did Goldstein? No, no. We suffocated him. I'm going to shoot you. How are you going to make that look like suicide? I'm Mr. Morgan. You came in here like a maniac and attacked me when they find you with a bullet. Fascinating, Mr. Quinn. Don't stop now. Mr. Morgan, it seems I owe you an apology. You know what you've just heard might be open to misinterpretation. Oh, yeah? What they did, they, they silenced Quinn. That means they could go into business again tomorrow with a different agency and with a different Quinn. But of course, that's not my most pressing problem tonight. You are. Me? Yes. I suppose your friend is still waiting for you. Bill, has it been five hours? Well, you had something good planned. They're both seats. I'll let me in. Ballet? Basketball. Oh, basketball. Oh, you're expanding your horizons. Touche. <laughs> well, you know, you being a professional lady of intelligence and independence, do you think it's possible that you could find happiness this evening with a man who is soon to retire from the advertising business? Uh, it's possible. Only possible? Probable. Oh, I don't be easy. But I thought we might go get a late night supper, and after that I got a hungry cat to feed back at my place. Hey, uh, how's Princess adjusting to a new surrounding? Well, I discovered something interesting about Princess that Sam never told us. What's that? She's a male. <laughs>